In the Luhansk region, during the assaults, the enemy used Ziguli cars and motorcycles, probably due to a lack of equipment. This was reported by the officer of the planning section of the Rubez Brigade of Ukraine, Major of the National Guard, Dmitry Gozubenko, on air at Kiev 24. In the area of the Rubez Brigade's defense, the enemy is currently not using equipment during assaults. But when they were, our FPV drone operators were working on tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, Gozubenko said. According to him, the military even destroyed light-wheeled vehicles such as Ziguli and even motorcycles in this direction. Russian soldiers riding motorcycles, dirt bikes, quadricycles and dune buggies now account for about half of all attacks in some areas of the front. Soldiers and commanders say as Moscow's forces attempt to use speed to cross exposed open spaces where its lumbering armored vehicles are easy targets. These non-conventional vehicles have been turning up with such frequency that some Ukrainian trenches now overlook junkyards of abandoned, blown-up, off-road vehicles, videos from reconnaissance drones show. The new tactic is the latest Russian adaption for a heavily mined, continually surveyed battlefield as Moscow's forces work to achieve some tactical gains, often of just a few hundred yards. In early April, fighters of the National Guard of Ukraine captured an occupier from the Russian Marine Brigade who tried to storm Ukrainian positions on a moped. During the work of one of the aerial reconnaissance units in the Urozenoi area, UAV operators noticed a Russian soldier who was approaching Ukrainian positions on a moped and then tried to quietly approach closer and conduct reconnaissance, the National Guard said. The fighters of the 21st National Guard Brigade were already waiting for the uninvited guest. The National Guard reported that the prisoner was 43 years old and served under contract in the ranks of the Marine Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces. Since September 2023, he has been taking part in military operations in the Donetsk region. According to the prisoner, he was called up to serve as a driver, but was then transferred to an assault unit. Recall, some Russian units have been employing unorthodox combat transport, such as Chinese ATV, and motorcycles to carry out attacks over the weekend, but it was conventional infantry supported by artillery that secured gains in the tactically important Chasivya sector, according to the mainstream and social media channels. Ukraine has received and successfully used some Martlet missiles since it first received them back in 2022, destroying Russian Orlan-10 Rese UAVs and other targets. According to the Kyiv Post media outlet, on June the 27th, 2022, servicemen of the 95th Separate Airborne Assault Brigade downed a Russian Ka-52 Alligator helicopter with a Martlet missile. Great Britain has recently been training more Ukrainian servicemen to use the Martlet. This missile's main advantage is that it is multifunctional. It can effectively destroy both aerial and surface targets in a wide range of combat actions. It can be launched from various platforms, helicopters, ships or ground launchers. Notably, it is a very modern weapon. The first batch of 1,000 Martlet missiles ordered in 2013 became available in 2021. The UK government's recent £176 million order envisions not only the production of Martlet missiles, but also the modernization of the launching platforms, including anti-ship missile systems. There are also plans to arm the majority of the Royal Navy's Wildcat onboard multi-role helicopters with Martlet missiles. The Martlet measures a mere 1.3 meters in length and 76 millimeters in diameter and weighs 13 kilograms. One British anti-submarine helicopter can carry as many as 20 Martlets in one sortie and effectively destroy seaborne targets as well as helicopters and UAVs thanks to the modern fire control and targeting system. Flying at Mach 1.3 or 1,800 kilometers an hour, the Martlet can effectively destroy targets at ranges up to 9 kilometers. It is half the speed of Star Streak, but this gives it a number of advantages. One of the advantages is the longer effective range, 9 kilometers versus the Star Streak's 5 to 6 kilometers, as the Martlet spends less fuel per second. Another advantage is higher precision. Missile system operators know that at a relatively lower speed, it is easier to control a missile and guide it to a moving target. 
Having selected a surface or aerial target, the operator keeps it locked until the impact while the missile is guided by the laser from the launcher. The laser beam is controlled by the operator through a joystick and the launcher does not need to be moved. Given the increased production of marked missiles in the UK, those supplied to the Ukraine Defence Forces might be launched not only from ground platforms but also from MI-8 and MI-24 helicopters. Moreover, in order to save aircraft and crews that Ukraine is short of, Martlet missiles could be launched from UAVs. One more important advantage is the cost. The production of one Martlet costs around $30,000, which is cheaper than $60,000 to $80,000 per Igla-1 missile and greatly cheaper than almost $850,000 per German-produced missile from the Stinger FIM-92K Block 1.